wow, how cool for you. You're freaking yeah, producing grateful. tracks. It's sick. I'm grateful. Uh, I just think the mindset that I've had, uh, you know, when I was younger, you know, when I was getting started and stuff as a teenager, it was always like, oh, I want to be the biggest, I want to be the best and whatever. Over the years, my mindset has totally shifted. It's just like, I want to do what I love and what I'm passionate about. And then that's when my career started going in the direction that I wanted to go. It's like, Dude, and that's when I just you're winning want to do what life. I like. It's literally yeah, when yeah, you're yeah. winning at life. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You'd always reach that realization, in my opinion, as an artist. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yes, there's financial strains that may yeah, delay yeah, that. Yeah. That's the destination. Though. Right. And there was a lot of personal growth as well, like w with my coming out, with like being comfortable with myself, loving myself, along with discovering who I am as an artist. My taste has changed over the years, like anyone's taste kind of evolves. But the deeper and deeper I get into my, my psyche and understand myself, the more I know how I like to play live, what I like to make, what I like to bring to the table. So it's like every year I feel like I, I learn more and more you know I started DJing 20 years ago but I feel like I learned more this year than I have in the last 20 years you know yeah bro it's crazy <laughs> dude I mean that's the thing too though about you were you put yourself in a position to be surrounded by greatness which is Appreciate like that. such yeah it's crazy no I no but it's such it. for your personal for your personal growth yeah as an artist yeah, to yeah, be yeah, have yeah. that be your environment yeah, definitely is like huge i imagine just huge because you're if you're you're le you're still in a state of learning and developing uh, you're always in a state yeah, of learning and but like and you're just maximizing that definitely like by having the people yeah, you the, have the, around you the people you're in contact 100%, with 100 percent. like the people uh, that's 100 percent. like the, surrounding yourself well obviously it's it's not easy to get you know around people like if you idolize someone you look up to them yeah. and whatever and then all of a sudden now you're kind of friends with them that is a trip and that's like something that i don't take for granted yeah but it was like i didn't have when i got into the music industry i didn't have any connections i didn't know anyone it was it was purely just from the music i think they could just tell that i was passionate about the music like john we're going to the bedrock party tonight yeah uh that was i didn't i looked up to him for so long and it was so natural he played i launched a label called divine and he played the first release on my label. And that was like, it's called 18 Minute Loop. And I saw a video of him playing it in Argentina. Then I, I, got, an, I got his email from my manager who, who was friends with him. And then I said, thanks for playing my track. And then he just said, send me some more, you know, and I sent him a few more and then he played those. And then I met him at a show, like, and we kind of hit it off, swapped numbers. And then he called me on the phone the next day. And like, I was in my living room and I was, sweating when I saw like what I saw on the phone like he was calling me I was like to my roommates I was like what is going on right now like this is insane I just remember like freaking out but then he's just such a nice guy we become friends but like that that was an organic thing you know yeah. that wasn't like a you know it I wasn't like you know I've been to 20 of his sets just like on right. a dance floor as a fan just enjoying it wasn't like externally set up no, it was I'm, a goal I'm not, that was I'm achieved not, i'm not going yeah. to like backstage like trying to network with him or whatever it's just like I i've always just been on the dance floor enjoy the music and then next thing you know we're, we're friends you, just okay. so you're this like producer this dj that has found such success but at the same time bro I'm not running into you in the DJ booth every t like I'm running into you on the dance floor, bro. Yeah, and I mean, that doesn't like, it's it's a, dude. It speaks so much. It's like, dude, it's on again, the dance it's floor. A it's a place of passion. It's like that's where you feel. That's where you learn. At least for yeah. me, I learn a lot on the dance floor. Like I learn, you know, especially when it's someone playing really cool, like the legends. You know, playing yeah. like really, really cool. Um, that's how you learn, and then that's how I learn. It, uh, also, screw learning; it's just fun. Yeah, it's, it's like I just like having once. fun. Like it's like balance. It's like I, you know, I don't party as Dude. often as I used to, but you know, if we're in Miami and her non spinning, it's like I'm not gonna not go. Yeah. Am I gonna sit in my bed? <laughs> no. You, 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 you'd know this too, but are you learning more on the dance floor than like sitting behind them with like your, you know, stroking your chin, trying to see like how do they, you know, how how are they? pressing the key like well, it, I think, it's like two different kinds of two learning different right kinds of learning and i think a lot of the dance floor what i learned when i learn on the dance floor you learn a lot about both production and dj and you're learning why does that track work at that time like how did they set that up to make that work in that time and that's only really something you can learn on the dance floor because it's a feeling 
you also learn, you know, how the frequencies affect your body and why, like if he's going staccato bass lines to a legato bass line and that, how that feels in your chest, that's something you learn on the dance floor. Like those are, like these are all, I think in terms of contrast, like everything. So I like dark music, I like light music, I like melodic music, I like drum music, like, but it's always important to like find this contrast and weave in and out of contrast through the set. And those are lessons I've learned on the dance floor. But then lessons I've learned in the booth, I mean, this is a ridiculous situation, but for my 30th birthday, I went to stereo to see John play. He was playing 10 and a half, 11 hours, whatever it was. And I was on the dance floor for a good seven or eight hours, I think. Then I decided to just go in the booth to say hello and then every track he would like turn around and then explain like oh this track is from like 99 and da 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 and like it's and i'm just like are you kidding me right now like this is the craziest you know in the moment i'm just like just trying to kind of take it all in he would just like play a couple tracks and turn around and explain like the track and how it was made and whatever and when he found it and his experience with it and then goes back and plays i'm just like this is insane you know, so it's they're, like they're, it's personal, cool to see both personal commentary. Yeah, yeah, on it's, like. it's cool to see. It's cool to see both sides, uh, but like that's not a. You know, um, I'm just grateful to have those experiences. But again, it's just coming from a place of of passion. It's not coming from oh, a yeah. place of like I want to be in the booth and like party in the booth. Like it's like, it's just, yeah, you know. <laughs> I feel you. Bro. I I think um, one thing you touched on the the contrast. It's like, I think everything, I think one thing that's so funny, it's embedded in the scene. It's whether it's artists talking about artists, whether it's media covering the scene, it's like the, the gold lies in the ability for, for a sound to be, to have contradictions. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's no, this, but it's this. I know, I it's know, this, I know, but it's I this. Know, but I honestly, it's, it's true for this progressive kind of, I, I not just, to put a box in. No, I know, but but I, yeah. I find that like when people, the thing is what I've found is when you have a hit or something that really does well in a certain sound, and maybe that sound is like one fifth of my pie. Yeah. Let this guy pass. It's really loud. Oh yeah, you're chilling, dude, to the rescue. All right. Uh, if you get really known, like if something really explodes and it's a certain sound, and maybe that sound is like something I'd play like towards the very end of the set, some people will think that's all I play for five hours. And it, that's uh, not at all. Like I like, I don't think in terms of the this style or genre or whatever, like I like deep house, I like tech house, I like techno, I like progressive house, I like trance, I like, I like, if yeah. it's hot, it's hot. Like if it, and I like to find ways to mix. I don't think in terms of like the genre, like I can mix a tech house track into a progressive house track and make it sound really interesting. And I think that there's something cool about blending these things and layering a loop on something else that you wouldn't think works. And I think right. that's from like early DJing education for me, playing all those bar mitzvahs and birthday parties and stuff, mixing Katy Perry and Dead Mouse and <laughs> you know what I mean? When I was like 12 and like figuring out ways to mix tracks that on paper, you'd look and you'd like, that doesn't make any sense. But then when you're in in flow, it's like you sort of, you're like, okay, it's in the same key. The groove sort of works. We'll give it a shot, you know? Yeah. And I love those. I love, but no one on the dance floor will be like, oh, this is a tech house track and it's mixed with the progressive. Like, it's just people are dancing, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, it's, it is a contrast though. Like you go on an arc for some melodic stuff and people are just kind of like, oh, it's beautiful. And then maybe we want to go it back down into the into the darkness and go into the dark and then bring it out and then when you bring in a chord again then it's so much more beautiful than if you were just playing really simple chords the whole time it's not as impactful so that's why i think contrast and dark and light uh groovy like staccato and legato bass lines it's really important contrast if you have a, a lot of staccato bass lines in a row when you bring in some legato it can really boost the energy also if you're playing a lot of legato bass lines if you bring in something staccato it can can turn the groove. I can notice the groove on the dance floor changes. These are all things that are just like, just like looking around. You're like, you know, and it, I'm I'm always scrolling through. I'm like, okay, that's gonna get the job done that I want to get done. You know? Yeah. No, nice. It's cool to hop into your brain, honestly. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. You know, it's personal. It's so personal to it every is. single DJ. It is. It is. It is. It is. I grew up as a drummer, so I think a lot in terms of rhythm. Oh, nice. Um, like I, I also play guitar and piano and all that stuff, but. Uh, Kind of making music because I played drums, guitar, piano, and I wanted to record my own songs, basically. 
Uh, so I just got like a four track recorder and I would just play drums, play guitar over myself, play piano over myself. But I, drums was always my main instrument. So I think that's why I was so drawn to electronic because it's, it's, it's rhythmic, it's like grooves. And that's what I love about that, um, about that stuff. Oh, it's sick. Yeah. So what, DJs who like, DJs who know what they're talking about always say, Oh, I love playing an opening set. Oh, you got to be so creative. You got to do... You're about to open the room for John Digweed yeah. at the Bedrock Showcase. What Can you, like, actually say what that actually means to us? Like, or at least what's going on in your head? Like, why do you get to be more creative with an opening set? Why do some DJs right. say it's more freeing? Like, well, in, in ways that are more than just these general terms. So, if, if, if my... You know, the music that my range is like this, you know, I, them, yeah. I can, you know, and if, if I'm playing an open to close myself, I can hit this whole range in a way that makes sense. In an opening, it depend, it, it all depends on the room, but it's like, in, I would think my range for this set will be closer to like this. It won't be the lowest because there's a couple artists playing before me, but it's, I'm certainly not going to go into the upper echelon of absolute bangers because that's right. disrespectful. But I want to keep it, I don't want to go too deep because then it's just like, you can't be playing, like I'm playing 1230 to two. At one in the morning, you don't want to be playing too deep. Like that's not a good vibe. You want, you just want the room to just be groovy and having a good time, but you don't want to play too big of build ups. A build up here and there is fine, but you you just want to set some nice grooves. But again, playing too deep can be very harmful as well. If you're playing too deep too late, it can kind of mess up the thing for the next artist, whoever is playing, is what I've found. So given there's some restraints, you know, and I have a lot of music, I have a lot of music everywhere, but it's like I can really focus on the subtleties of, of, of these, these tracks where, you know, if I have an hour and a half to play, you know, uh, like when I played with Christoph the other night, I felt like it was an amazing party. And I, but I, I, I got to kind of, the, the, the arcs were just a little bit like, I, it worked really well. The crowd is amazing. It's just different. I, yeah. I honestly, the, 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 the best answer is I try not to think and I just like go with the flow and go with the heart. Like, I'm just like, it's all like an intuitive thing. I think if I think too much about what's going on, I just want to be organized, that's it. I just want to have my organization. If I'm organized, I just flow, and it's, yeah. then I'm just like, oh, I have 10 minutes left, like, and then I, hand it I, over. I, I could see a situation, like, even if, I, even if I was in your situation, it's like, you want to be so respectful. You want to, you want to set the room up in such a respectful way, but people are coming in at midnight lit, no, ready I know, to I know, party. I it's like that, but that's the conversation it's the I perfect balance. He's yeah. like, do your thing. Like, yeah. don't, 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 like, He's like, John is a big boy, just play. Just do your thing. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do my thing. Obviously, I'm not gonna stand up there and play 127. Yeah, you know, it's like, you know what you're doing, but I was like, can I leave you off 122, 123? He's like, do your thing, John's a big boy. I was like, okay, I'm gonna stop asking questions because it's the same response every time. Because it's like, if I'm opening for Joel for Dead Mouse, I can play like peak time techno and he, he enjoys that actually. Like I can play whatever I wanna play but it's different with John, obviously, because John isn't playing what Dead Mouse is playing. You just need to know it, it, but it's also like Davi is playing before me. He may be having a vibe going and it, it could be a really good vibe and that, that would change how I start. I don't even know my first track when I play, you know, I just, I just have organization and you get in the room, you feel the vibe, you choose, do you want to continue with what that is? Or do you think it would be better to either bring it kind of down a notch, bring it up a notch? Like there's, if it's, if it's very, very uh, percussive. Do you want to continue the percussive? Do you want to bring in some melodies? These are all questions. Five minutes before I'm playing, I'm just taking a look. Like, what's going on? You know? Yeah. Um, and it's the you tell the story as you go. You can only do that if you're prepared, though. Exactly. Like, or organized and prepared, organized, ready. Because that's the execution. Organized. organized. Yes. Exactly. Like, like, I am so organized. It's like I'm a quarterback cool. knowing his playbook. Like, you exactly. know, you watched your film, exactly. and you're like, now exactly. it's just time to actually do with exactly. the execution of but it. then but then when i play after the first track there's no thinking involved i feel yeah. like my brain turns off after that then it's just flow i'd like it there's no that's when i'm i'm i kind of get zoned i don't even know if my friends are behind me in the booth i don't know what's going on there could be like crazy stuff going around i don't really know what's going on because i'm just 
I'm in the state, I'm in a flow state of just like, just going. I'm just not even thinking. And, and when I'm thinking, when I think a lot, that's when it's a more difficult crowd. And, uh, but you can sometimes find that flow state. And I think those, those shows actually make it, um, you learn a lot. Like when, when you can't capture people, uh, you don't want to just like play an obvious crowd pleaser. I've learned that that's not what I like to do. You know, you, you just try to, you have to switch it up in a, in a, a, a classy way. Um, and that's something John has taught me actually like if something isn't quite working you don't want to just okay left field now I'm going to try this you have to like be classy like let's say we're playing something kind of beautiful melodic whatever but it's not really working and I want to get to kind of dark rhythmic you can't just just like okay now I'm going to play a dark rhythmic track like you have to figure out how to bridge keep over it a intentional tracks. yeah just like have a uh, snake it over to there and then maybe that'll bring the vibe up and you just take a look um but i think some of the most magical moments are when the crowd is really locked in and they're just getting behind what you're doing i felt this at the christoph uh, the party i threw with christoph last night or two nights ago god yeah. <laughs> whatever it was uh uh, when they were like locked in track three track four i'm just like okay just people like everyone is locked everyone is locked you can start going into unexpected strange territories that's when the fun happens and that i wouldn't really do that in an opening set like playing these trippier or weird or sometimes maybe but it, it's all it all depends but i find that that's when the real magic happens when you start to push yourself push others see like i almost like give them like a little bit more of like just like something a bit different and you see how they react and if it's a good reaction you can kind of give them a little more and see how they react and give them a little more and find this level where it's like you feel like everyone's just like what the hell is going on like and in a good way and yeah. that's a fun place to find yeah. and then when you're there then you comfort them after is what i found like you almost want to make people slightly uncomfortable at one point because then when you comfort them because i like to comfort people at the end like with warmth then it's really powerful. Yeah, dude, that's epic. It's like the manipulation of the surrounding environment exactly. to accentuate. Exactly. It's so really, like uh, slight discomfort yeah. is a very powerful tool in sets, and that's not something I would have said. You need a lot of confidence to be able to do that. Yeah. And really uncomfortable is not good. Right. But like keeping people on their toes, like Digweed's really good at doing that, where it's like he'll play some tracks that you were just like, what is this in a, in a great way? you know, something that we're just like, this is so trippy and so crazy. And then he'll always like take it back into the flow of the groove and that's yeah. something that he's really good at doing. So so are you essentially with with a DJ set when you're when you feel like you're playing confidently, are you kind of finding are you trying to see the room? Mm -hmm. You're playing your track strategically. You're almost trying to find out what they're after without them knowing what the, the audience without the audience knowing exactly what they're after you're trying to kind of figure that out track by track and bring them there in some instance i would say i would take it a step further you want to find out what they're after and then give them what they don't know they're after wow nice yeah yeah so like it's good to find out what they're after but that's when you take it to the next level where then you deliver something that that that's like the new foundation know. they don't know yeah. what they're after knowing what they're after and finding what they're after that's a good DJ. A great DJ can take them uh, to places that they are not aware that they were even going to go. Yeah, that's epic. You know? So that's that's the job. That's I mean, I try to do that yeah. now. It's and then if you asked me the same question eight years ago, it would have been a different answer. Yeah. Uh, but this is just how, what I like to do now. Uh, yeah, totally. I, it's, again, a place place of passion. I think that the, just the key in like this whole thing is like you just need to follow your gut, follow your heart. Like if if you believe something is great, if you believe like in a sound if you believe in what you're doing that's all that matters it's like i i don't long gone are the days like trying to please someone or whatever you know it's like obviously you want to have a good time but focus focus on the gut if the gut says something that that's what it is what what have what have been some of your tastes that that are true to your to your gut what i'm asking is like we changed so much as artists yeah, you yeah, know yeah. over a decade uh -huh. but what are some things that you thought were that just felt right going into it or you thought was sick going into it and it's still sick to you today like music like mu yeah or? like musically or what maybe like influences or musically or something i don't know like 
a well, way a rhythm well, hits you or whatever? Well, like, like through my musical journey, like when I was getting into like, when I was a teenager and I was getting into Dead Mouse and Eric Prids, like that was my introduction to progressive, like stuff yeah. like that and Axwell, like early Axwell. Um, I thought that stuff was super cool, but what changed it, changed the game for me, at the first person I think to change the game for me was Guy J. And I thought that it was wow. like, I just, I don't know how I even found it or what happened, but like that was, I was just like, I didn't even know what I was listening to is such beautiful music. And I still to this day love everything that he does. So I think yeah. that is one of those that was like a, and we're friends now, which is crazy as well. Like I'm like, it's, I try not to fanboy too much, but yeah, I, I think so he's sick. an amazing producer and <laughs> yeah. DJ. All right, so we're like, uh, we made it to your yeah, crib. Yeah, crib, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so let me ask you one more question, and then I think that, like, I want to let you focus on Yeah, 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 yeah good. But we're this good. is, this is Yeah, this was a sick, yeah, 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 it's a great little thing. Yeah. Um, so the last thing I want to ask you, you've been touring 73 days, or 73 weekends straight. Yeah, no, true? it was it was seventy gigs in a row with one weekend off. Yeah, okay. Uh, it was pre You're Burning freaking... Man until so it was June until March nonstop. Is there anything like exciting for you about this week that breaks it up from this week in week out on tour, or are you just in a complete flow state of like? this is just another weekend in a good way. Like well, it's Miami Music Week, but does that affect you? Absolutely, because like f for me, I, I like to block off a couple times a year where it's normally, you know, I have a great time DJing and I, I have, you know, I have friends all around, but normally, you know, I play my set, see my friends or whatever, and I, I go to bed. I mean, Music Week is different because it's one of the few times, including Burning Man, uh, my birthday, which is New Year's Day, I where you know, I'll get together with a lot of my friends and we, I will go to those after parties. I'll go to the dance floor. I'm going to go to space tonight. You know, I'm going to go have a good time. And I think the key is just like balance with that stuff. So it's like, for me, it's, it's, it's time to work right now. Obviously I'm not going to show up to the gig like hammered I'm going to like work but when I'm done working, then it's party, it's playtime, you know, and normally when I'm touring, I don't go to party mode, you know, I'll play, you know, maybe have a beer eat some DoorDash and go to bed. But like here, it's like, I wanna go on the dance floor. I wanna go check out, you know, what other people are playing. I wanna go see my friends. I have so many friends all over Link Up. Like, yeah, it's like five in the morning, my friend's playing, like, cool, let's go, you know? Normally I'm like, all right, now nah, I gotta go to bed. But you know, it's like, we have an Airbnb with like four of my closest friends. So it's <laughs> like, yeah, it's a, not, not, a, not a like, okay guys, I'm gonna go to bed. Like, no, yeah. <laughs> gonna go have some fun. Dude, awesome. <laughs> well, I'll end it with this, ready? Yeah. These guys like John, mm -hmm. Sasha, DT, who we were yeah, just yeah, at, yeah. So sick. Dude, we all want them to do this forever. forever. I know. But I know. there's going to be a time where that torch pass is more than just something we talk about, something that actually happens. And you've been handpicked of one of the guys oh, in man, this I next generation. It. I appreciate it. No, but it's an important responsibility too. Like seriously. Pressure's it's, on. It's, it's important, <laughs> but I'm just, as someone who loves this scene that we're in, I, it's very awesome that it's in the hands of someone so respectful. I really moving appreciate forward. that. Dude, really appreciate seeing you on the dance floor, yeah, seeing yeah, the way you, that, the respect man. for the legends, it's, Dude, it's in good hands. Dude, I we're appreciate stoked. that. Thank yeah. you so much. Man. No, no, really, dude, really this was awesome. That. Yeah, it's awesome. We'll see interview. you at the set, and yeah, it's gonna be yeah. sick. This is a great interview. Yeah, yeah. So it was cool concept too in the no, no, car. No, here. Yeah, yeah. Know, like, it all but, just came together. Yeah, sick. Thank you guys so much, yeah, and thanks for, for the sure. ride, man. Yeah. Like, that was dude, awesome, I, dude. Yeah, dude, dude Ryan, you fucking crushed yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> that was sick. You answered so many questions I also had, and I've been thinking about for literally 13 years. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah. Mind we'll see you there, bro. Yeah, sweet. Peace. Time to uh, time to get my shit together. <laughs> yeah, dude. We'll see Thank you. Out there. See you guys in a bit. <laughs>